Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can take Valorant spectator mode and make smooth cinematics as if there was a theater mode. You'll notice if you tried to record any angles with the spectator mode, there's some issues, it duplicates frames, there's a HUD, stuff like that. So in this we'll walk through the steps I took to make the angles and make them smoother, more professional. No! No you did not! When I first decided to use spectator mode to get angles for Valorant, I noticed that my game was running between 200 and 300 frames. So I thought, oh, this is great. I have a lot of frames. And if I record in a high frame rate, I can slow it down and it'll be smooth. Of course, if you've used spectator mode, you notice that it is very choppy, is inconsistent. I believe this is because it is live. It's not like a theater mode where it's something pre-recorded and you can just go back in. So spectator mode, there's a lot of duplicate frames. So I was recording at 120 FPS and you can see in this footage here, there's a lot of duplicate frames and it's very inconsistent. It'll be like two real frames, one duplicate, one real frame, two duplicates. It's consistent, it's all over, or inconsistent, it's all over the place. So because of that, there's no simple and fast fix. So what I did the first time is I went in, made a pre-composition of the clip I wanted and the length I wanted, and I manually deleted the frames. Now this was super annoying, but it is one way to get rid of those duplicate frames. The other issue with spectator mode is it is inconsistent. So when it is duplicating the frames, it kind of feels steppy. And that is something we honestly have to live with until we get a theater mode. So you notice there might be two duplicate frames and all of a sudden the camera's further along than you think it should be. Like there's not as much similar or consistent pacing between where each frame is. And that is what happens. You just have to record again and try to get a good one. But if you don't want to manually delete the frames, there is this tool I found and I used to delete all the duplicate frames automatically. Now, what I did is I went to this A scripts and A plugins website and it, you just make an account, it's free. Unfortunately, the tool is not free, but you can use the trial of it for free. So I think you get like 150 frames. I will note that the full tool costs $40, 40 USD. For me as an editor, the amount of time and hours I'm saving by not manually removing the frames, that's a win for me. I'll definitely do that because I can click a button, walk away, and it does it automatically for me. And it's probably more consistent. So time is money when you're an editor. If you can move faster and a tool lets you do so, in the long run, it'll save you money. And really, by the time I'm manually removing all the frames, I'm not gonna have a good time. I'm not gonna be happy or in like a good state of mind to keep editing because I'm like, that's annoying work. Up to you if you wanna do it by hand, removing the frames, or if you wanna use this tool. I just thought this was a useful tool and I wanted to share it with you guys, especially for Valorant content right now. And what you do is you go into tools and you download their app manager. And within the app manager, once you're logged in with your account, you can look for frame duplicator. I'll put the name on the screen because I don't remember exactly. Grab that and put it in. You'll see it only works with After Effects 2019 and up. I have 2017 as well and I tried it on there. It doesn't work, so you need 2019, 2020 After Effects. But once it's in After Effects, you go to your window mode, go down to the bottom and you'll see these are where your scripts are and you can grab the frame duplicator remover. So now with this tool, it's easy to remove the frames in Adobe After Effects. So what I do here is I'll scale in to hide the HUD. So I'm recording at uh, 2K so I can scale in and still be okay with 1080p footage. I suggest recording your footage in 2K or 4K because you are gonna scale in to hide the HUD. So once I scale in there, I have the framing I want and the amount of frames I want, but I still have all those duplicate frames. So I'll pre-compose this once it's its own composition. I open the duplicate frame window and you can set a region here, which is nice. You can see I can put a circle on the screen and it says just this region. That way, if there was a HUD on screen, you could say, just look at this region so it doesn't think the HUD is a duplicate because it's not moving. But we don't really need to because I've already scaled in. Also at the top, you set this number to zero because we're not using film and film has like grain and noise and sometimes that might trick it into thinking there's duplicates, but we're not doing that because we have a clean digital video. So we just set that to zero and you can literally click on the file now and click do it and you just wait and it takes about a minute to a minute and a half, depending on how many frames. And I found it deleted a ton of frames because a bunch of it is duplicate frames here. And now I have a new section of video that has no duplicate frames. It's obviously moving a little faster than what I like it, but I can use that video now to play with the Twixter and the time warp and make it nice and smooth, ramp in, ramp out. And for this example here, I bring it back into my 60 FPS composition. And because I know I recorded at 120 FPS, I can actually right click, go time squeeze and put it to 200%. This really depends on what you recorded at. You could have recorded it at 60 and you're just putting it in there so you don't have to do this. But if you're recording at a higher frame rate, make sure you slow it out so you can get the exact frames and you're using every frame. And that's how I got my clean angles. And once I had those kind of sections of those pre-composed sections that no longer have duplicate frames and are the right frame rate, then I would add Twixter or uh, time warping 
to those and make it kind of ramp in and ramp out and you know how montages go. Another trick that really helps because it's steppy is adding motion blur. I use real smart motion blur. It's just a plugin I use, but stuff like that. And if you want to see my tutorial on how to add camera shake, that is another thing I add to these effects. I'll put it down in the description. But yeah, I just really wanted to get into making Valorant videos and I can't wait for a theater mode. So I jumped in with spectator mode and used what we have. So there's some workarounds to make it a little smoother, a little faster. So it's really on you how you utilize it. If you guys like this video and it's been helpful in any way, thumbs up means a lot to me. I'll check out new videos next week. Thanks guys. Show, but is this position good enough? No, Sinatra gonna be taking him down with that frenzy. Sinatra misses one but gets the second. That's a triple goal. Go four. Oh my goodness. And now the showstopper to get it and he got something. Oh my gosh. Let me handle that fucking light work. No. No, you did not. <laughs>